Good morning, everybody. I am Abby Elizabeth, and this is the Earth and Vessels YouTube channel. This channel is for Christian women, but anyone is welcome to listen. A lot of people come to me with various dilemmas, and you know I understand I live in this world too. But the, the Word of God is very clear, and it's actually very simple to, to figure out what to do with various questions that we might have particularly in relationship to dilemmas that the enemy gives unto us. So, of course, these days we are now, as Christians, realizing that the ways that we once lived have been taken away from us, and they're not going to be given back, not unless we comply. And it's the kind of compliance, of course, that a Christian cannot do. You see, we obey God and not men. And if men say that we need to do something that God forbids or that we need to cease doing something that God commands, then we obey God and not men. And we do this even unto death. So Jesus Christ warned. He warned us that there would come a time when there would be people who would think they're serving God by killing us. And so we recognize that it's not always easy or popular to walk in the ways that God commands us to, and that sometimes it might mean that we're hated and that we're killed. I want to begin today in Isaiah 57, chapter, chapter 57 and verse 1. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart, and merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. When a Christian has to not comply with ordinances of the government because it's contrary to what God commands us to do, when we're faced with choices, we can remember what happened to the three Jewish youths at the time of King Nebuchadnezzar. King Nebuchadnezzar put up an image in the plain of Dura. And he required that everyone, when they heard the music, would bow down before this image. And there were three Jewish youths, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who refused to do this. And the king was wroth. And the king said, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to throw you into the fiery furnace. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because so many of you say to me things like, well, but what if I can't work? Or, or what if I can't eat? Or what if they take my children away? Or, or what if, you know, I lose my house or my family? Or if I'm thrown into prison? What if they kill me? You see, the thing is, is that a Christian realizes that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he suffered in obedience unto death even when it wasn't easy. And we are not above our master. So there might be situations wherein someone tells us to do something under the threat of death and if, or, or something else, social ostracism, homelessness, starvation, and so forth. And as Christians, we need to remember that we serve the living God. And God is all-powerful. He made heaven and earth. He formed us. He knew us before we were ever born. He knew his people before they were ever born. So if you're a Christian and you're serving him, you've been baptized in his name and filled with the Spirit, and you're serving him in holiness, then you remember that your life is hidden with him. You are safe in Jesus Christ. And while they might throw you into the fiery furnace, or they might tell you you have to be beheaded, or they might tell you you can't work, you can't live in your home, they might take your children away because you're refusing to comply with the wicked ordinances of an evil government. So they're telling you that your baby there needs to be injected with a toxic drug that might brain damage them permanently. If you don't agree to that, they're going to take that child from you and do it anyway. Well, then you have to trust God. 
You have to obey God and not men. You see, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said no to Nebuchadnezzar, they said unto him, they said, Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us, but if not, still we say no. You see, this is what a Christian has to do. We re realize that God has the power to deliver us from those who would kill us or who would torment us. He has the ability to feed us in the wilderness. He has the ability to give us food and clothing and a, a safe place to be, even in the midst of these tribulations that are coming on the earth. But we're not guaranteed that. What we are guaranteed, though, is that our everlasting life is hid with Christ. And if we're obedient unto him, even if it means death, that then we will inherit everlasting life in the kingdom of our God. You see, there are situations where God's people are killed. It happened to the prophet, you know, the various prophets of the world, such as John the Baptist. John the Baptist was murdered because he told the truth. So, and in particular, he told the truth about adultery. So he said that Herod didn't have his brother's wife lawfully. They were in adultery. And for that reason, John the Baptist was beheaded. So just because we're promised by God safety, it doesn't mean the kind of safety that most people think of. So these days, most people think safety is things like uh, no invading armies, no diseases, no pestilences, no trials, no temptations, no poverty, and, and no shame. But that's not what is promised to a Christian. What is promised unto us is that when we're obedient, despite shame, despite threats, despite uh, various ordinances being thrown into prison or even killed, that when we're obedient unto death, then, then we will also share in the glory of Jesus Christ because we were willing to do what he commanded even when the governments of this world said otherwise. A Christian who's been saved by Jesus Christ realizes that his kingdom is not of this world and we serve the king. And so if the king tells us that we can't do this or that, then we don't do it because we love him. And those who refuse to obey Jesus Christ verily do not love him. The Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ, laid down his life in obedience to his Father because he loved us. And so we who realize what it is that he saved us from, the power of darkness and the penalty of death and everlasting hell, when we realize what in his so doing, in his laying down his innocent life, what he has given unto us, salvation in his name, that we don't care what flesh and blood can do to us. We care instead what the living God has to say about what is pleasing unto him and what is not. So Christians don't take part in divination or medical testing. It, it has other applications, but today this is most relevant. We also don't take part in sorcery. We don't take drugs. We don't have our children given drugs. And we don't listen to what medical authorities or government authorities say when it's contrary to the word of God. Furthermore, a Christian believes God and not religious authority. So just because someone who's got a fancy outfit on, who calls himself by a flattering title, tells us that what we're doing is okay, everything that we do, we hold up to the light of Scripture. So a Christian is obedient unto the Word of God. The Son of God, Jesus Christ, said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Freedom, the law of liberty, is not that you can do whatever you want. That's the law of this world. That's Satan's way. Do whatever you want as long as you bow down to me. That's Satan's way. The way of holiness is Jesus Christ's way. 
So we continue in his word, and then we are his disciples. We do what the word of God says, and then we are made free. Free from what? From consequence? No. Free from sin. And when a person is free from sin, they are free indeed. I pray this message has blessed you today. Feel free to email me. My email is always in the description box below. Or to comment if you feel so led. And may the word of the Lord go forth today and edify many in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.